Coming up on Midships, Carnival's Panorama adjusts its course as Hurricane Nora approaches the west coast of the United States. A favorite California port closes its doors to cruise ships until spring of next year. Celebrity Cruise Lines has allegedly escorted people off of their ship who are accused of not being fully vaccinated. Carnival Cruise Lines is hit with a class action lawsuit when over 100 cruisers are suing them for the way they handled the beginning of the coronavirus outbreak. All this and more coming up on Midships. Hey, hey, welcome to the Midships YouTube channel. I'm your Captain Corey. Before we get started today, I want to remind you that you have one more day to enter our giveaway. If you'd like to win this cruise swag, go ahead and follow the link in the description below or up in, I think it's this corner now, up in your upper right hand corner. Just click the link. It'll take you to the video that tells you everything you need to know to enter. And if you just can't wait to get your hands on this and our other giveaway cruise swag, there are Amazon affiliate links in the description below. You can even customize the color of your passport holder or your pool towel bands. Plus, it's a chance to support this channel by supporting yourself. Thanks so much for... Ch so just two days after Hurricane Ida affected cruising in the Gulf of Mexico, we hear news coming from the West Coast that there's yet another hurricane. And this one is named Nora. And she is now currently affecting the ports of call for a Carnival's cruise ship, the Panorama, that's currently sailing out of Long Beach, California. Now, Panorama's been in the news a couple times over the past weeks. As you might recall, she's had some issues with her propulsion system, and we are still not sure if those issues have totally been ironed out, or maybe we have a temporary fix that's keeping her going. But we're going to get into an article from CruiseHive.com. And this is written by Emery Thacker, entitled Carnival Cruise is Adjusted After Hurricane Nora Sweeps Through the Mexican Riviera. The Carnival Panorama cruise ship is currently sailing in the Mexican Riviera and has adjusted its itinerary due to Hurricane Nora, which has now dissipated. To keep guests and crews safely away from the storm, the ship canceled a port of call and added a different one, along with adjusted days. Let's talk about the itinerary adjustments for the Panorama. Hurricane Nora has already finished sweeping through the Mexican Riviera, causing damage and flooding across the region including at the popular cruise destinations of Puerto Vallarta and Mazatlan. To make sure everyone on board remains safe, Carnival Cruise Line confirmed to Cruise Hive that the current itinerary for the Panorama had been changed. The third Vista class vessel, which is only on its second voyage since restarting operations from California, was previously scheduled to visit Puerto Vallarta on August 21st, Mazatlan on August 31st, and Cabo San Lucas on September 1st as part of its August 28th voyage out of Long Beach, California. The cruise line canceled the scheduled call at Mazatlan on August 31st and has replaced that with a sea day, which brings about the cruise line favorite sea day brunch. So despite missing a fantastic port call, at least you got to spend a day enjoying the beautiful Carnival Panorama. The cruise line also added a call at Ensenada, which Carnival Panorama already completed a visit at. The cruise ship will then wrap up with its regular sea day before arriving back in California on Saturday, September 4th. So like we mentioned to all the midships family who I know is booked on Carnival Panorama in the upcoming days and weeks, she has not reported to have had that propulsion issue totally ironed out. So we will still be watching that ship like a hawk for you guys. Make sure you're subscribed to this channel if you don't want to miss any new updates on Carnival's Panorama or anything else in the cruise industry. And while you're down there, why don't you hit that thumbs up button if you love cruising. Now let's keep talking about the West Coast because a favorite port of many has just said no cruisers until March of 2022. Let's talk about that now. From KEYT.com, Santa Barbara suspends cruise ship visits until March by Julia Guyon and Tracy Lair. Santa Barbara, California has announced its continued suspension of cruise ships visits on Monday. The waterfront director, Mike Wiltshire, said it's been a really tough decision. Cruise ships play a big role in the community and to the city and the waterfront. 
So making a call to put it on pause until spring does not come lightly. The decision follows a crew outbreak aboard Carnival Vista out of Galveston, Texas, that has been allegedly linked to a passenger's death. So we've reported on the story of the 77-year-old teacher who passed away after sailing on the Carnival Vista and becoming ill with COVID-19 while the ship was docked in Belize. It's unclear whether she contracted COVID aboard the Carnival ship or brought it with her on her vacation as that was before Carnival was testing vaccinated cruisers at embarkation. So I just wanna clear that up because this article is alleging something that is not necessarily proven to be true or false. So we just wanna keep all the facts straight and above board. Santa Barbara Mayor Kathy Murillo said they are watching the increase of COVID cases and want to protect the health of the community. She believes the industry will bounce back. Wiltshire said Monterey is also suspending its visits, but he believes Catalina Island will allow cruise visits. It just seems like we really shouldn't be the first ones diving back into this. The suspension of cruise ships to Santa Barbara will last until March 1st of 2022. So before we read more into this article, I want to make my own personal commentary that I think this type of talk from this mayor is absolutely ridiculous and uneducated because, as you well know, to board a cruise ship, you have to be tested negative for COVID-19. You have to have been fully vaccinated. You are monitored at all times while you're on the ship. You are contact traced. So for Mayor Kathy Murillo to just cavalierly say cruise ships are unsafe coming into Santa Barbara, I think is absurd. And I think is a very uneducated stance for this mayor to be taking on this topic. And I wish that she would think a little bit more outside of the box and have her convictions changed because I'm sure she wouldn't be in favor of closing down the airport in Santa Barbara, which would bring in thousands of travelers who have not been tested and who have not been vaccinated into the Santa Barbara area. So when we hear news like this, it kind of makes my blood boil personally. I don't know about yours, but it's, it's really hard to hear a person this uneducated making these kind of decisions that affect the livelihood of everybody in that community. A local resident, Heidi Harbaugh, said she feels bad for the businesses that have already lost tourists dollars due to the pandemic. The ships visit during what the industry calls the shoulder season between September and May. They usually book stops off the coast of Santa Barbara more than a year in advance. This is all changed due to COVID. And we'll wrap up with a quote from the waterfront cruise director of Santa Barbara, Mike Wiltshire. Our cruise ship program brings millions of dollars every year to the local economy, as well as introduces Santa Barbara to tens of thousands of people from around the world. It is a well-run program that strategically minimizes impacts by scheduling visits only during the shoulder seasons and often midweek. That being said, the health and safety of our community, as well as the health and safety of cruise ship passengers visiting our area are top priority. So we have decided to pause the program. We remain optimistic that once we're back to pre-pandemic status, Santa Barbara will return as a premier destination for the cruise line industry. He also added that Discovery Princess is the next cruise ship scheduled to call on the port on March 10th, 2022. So that's clearly some disheartening news coming out of Santa Barbara, California. We here at Midships hope they decide to reevaluate their plans and think a little bit more critically about the consequences that this type of port cancellation will have on their local economy. Now we all know the CDC keeps a list of places that they think you should probably not travel to. And yesterday they added two more areas that are very popular amongst cruisers to visit. And so we're gonna tell you all about that now. In an article from CruiseHive.com's Robert McGilvery, CDC elevates two more Caribbean cruise destinations to level four, do not travel. The Center for Disease Control and Prevention has increased the COVID threat level to level four, signifying a high risk of COVID transmission for two additional cruise destinations on August 30th. Puerto Rico and St. Lucia have both been added to the list. The current list of destinations that have been given level four very high risk of COVID transmission is steadily growing. Aside from Puerto Rico and St. Lucia, the list includes the Bahamas, St. Martin, Aruba, Dominica, Curacao, St. Bart's, Martinique, 
the U.S. Virgin Islands, and the British Virgin Islands. The cruise destinations of Puerto Rico and St. Lucia have now been added to the list and fall into the COVID-19 very high level four category, have had more than 500 cases per 100,000 inhabitants in the past 28 days, according to the criteria the CDC outlines on their website. And if you wanna check out the link to this website yourself, it and links to all the news stories presented today will be in the description below. The CDC said in a statement to the Washington Post, travel increases your chance of getting or spreading COVID-19. You may feel well and not have any symptoms, but you can still spread it to others. Staying home is the best way to protect yourself and others from COVID transmission. Travelers need to be aware that they can spread disease at their destination among people who may not have the same access to vaccine and quality medical care that they do. But as it stands, the CDC's guidance is just that. However, if CDC guidance is coupled with the State Department, which it usually is, travelers could expect to see some other issues. As an aside to this information, I'd like, as an aside to this information, I'd like to add something else. Many of the islands that these cruise ships dock at in these areas that are considered a level four high risk of transmission are actually the cruise line's private islands. So to say that there's a high risk in that exact particular spot is a little bit of a stretch when more than likely the risk is sampled from the areas where the inhabitants of the countries live. So I read a story from a consumer advocacy group that talked about a couple who were booked on a celebrity cruise who made it all the way into their cruise cabin, had a bite to eat, and came back into their cruise cabin only to be removed from the ship before they pulled out of port by ship security. So if you're curious like I was, let's go ahead and dive into the story so you can learn a little bit more of what happened to this couple. From the Elliott Advocacy Agency, written by Michelle Couch Friedman. Well, that didn't take long. The first wave of unvaccinated and partially vaccinated passengers who've been denied boarding to their cruise ships have washed ashore. As the cruise industry begins to return to the waterways, mass confusion about the requirements for cruising has ensued. One of the first casualties of this chaos was Joshua Maxwell and his fiance. They showed up at the dock earlier this month, planning to set sail on Celebrity Cruises Equinox. Unfortunately, they weren't fully vaccinated and the cruise line rejected the couple, the couple and sent them home. The twist? Maxwell says vaccination requirements confused cruise line employees too. As a result, he says the couple were allowed to board the ship and settle into their cabin before being forcibly removed by security only hours later. So what's going on? Maxwell's unpleasant tale should serve as a warning to would-be passengers everywhere. If you've got an upcoming cruise, make sure you're fully vaccinated or you won't be cruising anywhere except back to your house. And this is totally true. Unless you fall into a very limited category of people under 12 or people who have a doctor's note that exempts them from vaccination on certain cruise lines, if you're not vaccinated, don't even bother planning to cruise until at least after November and more than likely until at least 2022. Earlier this summer, Maxwell and his fiance booked their Caribbean cruise. They would be aboard the Equinox and they would board in Fort Lauderdale on August 1st. On the day of departure, the couple made their way to port. They were especially excited as the cruise was more than a vacation. The couple planned to marry during the trip. And we have a quote, we arrived at the port early as celebrity instructed. Before the trip, we both took a PCR test and received negative results. At check-in, we provided those results to the cruise line. We received the first round of the Moderna vaccine and we shared that information as well. Then we went through four security checkpoints. At each station, the employees photographed our identification, our vaccine cards, and our negative coronavirus tests. After that, we boarded the ship, went to our cabin, and unpacked for the eight-day cruise. After unpacking, the couple began to explore the ship. It was still several hours before the scheduled departure. First, we had dinner, Maxwell recalled. We were happy to finally be on board and we were ready to set sail. But as the couple settled back into their cabin, the evening took a shocking turn. Maxwell says that as they were relaxing after dinner, there was a knock on their cabin door. It was now just 10 minutes before the scheduled departure of Equinox. 
a woman speaking broken English said something about a COVID test. Maxwell recalled, we weren't sure what she wanted, but showed her the negative test results and she left. The couple barely had time to ponder that exchange before a more forceful knock hit the door. This time, Maxwell could not believe his eyes. Now, there were five or six big guys in security outfits standing there. The group leader said that we had to leave the cruise immediately because we weren't fully vaccinated. At that point, the security guards began treating us like common criminals. The news devastated my fiance. She was crying. The guard told us that we had five minutes to get our things and get off the ship. Then he said that the police were waiting for us outside as if we had broken the law. They just used this as a scare tactic to get us off the boat faster. Maxwell said he tried to reason with the officers, explaining that they had successfully gone through all security checkpoints. By this time, we had been on the ship for hours, Maxwell remembered. I showed him our vaccine and testing cards, but they didn't care. It was clear from the demeanor of the officer that there would be no negotiations. The couple's fate had been sealed. Hastily, they tossed their belongings in their bags and the burly guards quickly escorted them off the ship. And soon, the stunned and devastated couple were standing on the dock, watching Equinox sail away without them. Maxwell said he was stunned that the cruise line could kick them off the cruise and abandon them. So this is a story and a warning to all of you who have cruises. Be sure you are checking your cruise planner. You are checking your cruise line's website. You are checking with midships to see if there are any protocol changes or any requirement changes on your cruise line to make sure you don't miss something like this couple did that, that resulted in them missing what would have been their wedding at sea. Now, there's always two sides to every story, and we have yet to hear celebrity side of the story, but I can tell you it sounds like this couple didn't read the fine print in their cruise planner because from everything that I've seen and investigated, if they had read the fine print, they would have known that they did indeed need to be fully vaccinated for 14 days before sailing aboard Celebrity Cruises. Carnival Cruise Line is back in the news and they do not want to be. Carnival failed to protect passengers from virus despite warnings, lawsuit claims. And before we read this, this article is written from a certain point of view. It's going to make claims which have not necessarily been corroborated. So please do not associate midships with any claims in this article. Carnival Corporation has coronavirus cruise customers last year, despite being warned by their doctors about the outbreak of concerns about flu-like symptoms on board. According to US court filings, more than 100 passengers and crew on the voyage that left San Francisco on February 21st last year tested positive for coronavirus. Two of the passengers who traveled on their previous trip to Mexico subsequently passed away. The company declined to comment on the proceedings, but said it implemented a set of protocols flexibly designed as needed to adapt to the changing public health conditions associated with COVID-19. Carnival says their fleet-wide cruise ships have protocols and precautions far superior to most other sectors and some of the highest level COVID-19 mitigations in place in any setting in the world. So that's kind of a tough read of an article. Hopefully you got the gist of it. There is now a lawsuit from all the folks that were sailing at the beginning of the pandemic on board Carnival Cruise Line, and they are claiming that the cruise line is solely responsible for them contracting COVID-19 while on board. So tell me, what are your thoughts on that? Should Carnival be held liable for something that the world did not quite really know or understand at the time? Or do cruise passengers bear some responsibility if they get sick? while on board their vacation. Don't forget the Midships Cruise Swag Giveaway ends tomorrow at noon Eastern time. Make sure you use the link in the description below to head over to the giveaway video. Thanks so much for stopping by today. And until next time, we'll see you on the Midships.